Okay. Uh, so, hi, uh, I'm Sheila Chabiric. I'm a second year PhD student at uh, Indria Saclay and the Cole Polytechnic under the supervision of uh, Francois Guazdue and Ioana Manolescu. I will talk about a structural and semantic summarization of RDF graphs. Um, so, basically, uh, in the relational databases, we have had this uh, fixed, well known, uh, predefined schema uh, to which all data had to conform. However, uh, the key feature of graph databases is uh, the absence of any such schema. Uh, so the data is uh, very uh, complex, diverse, um, and uh, the user is really faced with the problem of how to get acquainted with a completely new RDF data set. And this data set is usually very large, so uh, it's a, quite a difficult task. Uh, some usual suggestions are to uh, run a series of manually written queries to get some idea of uh, what is inside such as uh, write a query to uh, retrieve distinct types or to retrieve distinct properties, uh, resources of a certain type, or another query for resources of a type having a property, and so on. But this is all very uh, ad hoc and random. So our goal is basically, uh, based on the data, to ge generate uh, its summary, an RDF summary, uh, such that when a user looks at it, um, he can, they can immediately get an insight into the structure of the data set and they uh, know what kind of queries they can ask and get some answers to. So it assists them in data set visualization and uh, query formulation tasks. Uh, informally, uh, an RDF summary is also an RDF graph uh, generated from an input RDF graph G. Um, hopefully it is much smaller than G, it is compact. Uh, it represents the structure and semantics of G. Here we discuss uh, semantic graphs, uh, uh, semantic RDF graphs. Uh, we, uh, it should be possible to summarize G with or without RDF schema, which we will introduce later. And uh, we require zero user input. We really assume that the user has uh, no idea what is going on, he doesn't know what is interesting in the data, and uh, our approach should not depend on any user input. Uh, the challenge is that this uh, RDF graph heterogeneity. Um, RDF graphs are usually composed of a data component and a schema component. Um, there are two kinds of properties, two kinds of triples in uh, the data. Uh, these are type triples and type properties, and uh, all others are data properties. Uh, then in the schema, we consider um, uh, four kinds of properties, uh, the main uh, range, uh, subclass, and uh, sub-property. Uh, however, the types may or may not be there, the schema may or may not be there, and uh, the data does not have to conform the schema in any way. Uh, additionally, uh, due to the existence of these schema constraints, um, uh, other than these explicit physical triples that we have, uh, there may be some implicit triples which are inferred or entailed. Um, for example, um, if we know that R1 is of type book and uh, book is a subclass of publication, then we can infer that R1 is also of type publication. And uh, implicit triples are important. Uh, because uh, together with explicit triples, they form the semantics, the meaning of an RDF graph, and a complete query answer must reflect all, ex all triples, whether explicit or implicit. So our approach has to take into account uh, this as well. Uh, so we our, define our summary, RDF summaries as a quotient graph of an input RDF graph G uh, by a node equivalence relation. Uh, basically, uh, the node equivalence relation partitions nodes and uh, all nodes in a partition are, are equivalent to each other, and each partition uh, is represented by a single uh, summary node. There exists an edge between two summary nodes. Uh, if there exists an, uh, a node in the first partition, which is adjacent to a node in uh, the second partition. Uh, the notion of qu quotient graphs is a classical notion in graphs, uh, and here we introduce our own uh, uh, RDF node equivalence classes. Um, uh, according to which uh, classes and properties uh, are, always, are always equivalent only to, the, to themselves. So basically we just copy them to the summary together with their properties and a consequence of this is that schema triples are the same compared to the input. So this take, de takes care of uh, properties and class nodes and for data nodes we define uh, two RDF node equivalence relations. Um, one is uh, click based which groups data nodes, nodes based on data properties, and it can be strong and weak. And the second one is a type-based equivalence, uh, which groups the typed data nodes by their typing. 
So um, to understand click-based RDF node equivalence, uh, we uh, uh, first say what is source relatedness of data properties. So for example, if we have this graph um, with R1, R2, and R3, which have all these properties, uh, author and title are source related because they join on uh, R1. Title and editor are source related because they have also the common subject uh, R2. However, even though author and editor do not join, on, do not join uh, they are also source related because uh, R1 uh, has title and R2 has title as well. Uh, editor and comment are related because they join on R3. Uh, and author, title, editor and comment are all source related because there exists this chain of properties. Title, title, editor, editor and so on. Uh, so now we say that uh, a source click is a maximal set of data properties in G which are pairwise source related. So for this graph, we have a source click, uh, author, title, editor, comment. And uh, source cl clicks represent a partition over the input. Uh, similarly, we define target clicks based on target relatedness. So now we have a strong uh, and weak click-based equivalence. Uh, the strong click-based equivalence says that uh, two data nodes in G are equivalent if they have uh, the same source and the same target click. So in this example, if you have uh, D1 and D5, which both have an author, both, have, uh, both are sources of title, and bo both are targets of published, uh, we say that they are uh, strongly equivalent because they have the same source and the same target click. So uh, now we instantiate a, an RDF summary. Uh, we have a strong RDF summary, which is a quotient of an input graph G by the strong click-based equivalence. And for our uh, running example, this is its uh, strong summary. Uh, weak click-based equivalence. Uh, there are three cases in which uh, two data nodes from G can be uh, weakly equivalent to each other, uh, while strong equivalence uh, required that both source and target clicks are the same. Uh, here we say that uh, either source or target clicks are the same for two data nodes, and they are non-empty. For example, uh, here uh, R1, R2, and R3 are all weakly equivalent because they have uh, the same source click, and we don't care about the target click here. Uh, the second case is uh, when both clicks of both nodes, uh, source and target clicks, are empty. And the third case uh, is interesting, so we'll say something more about it. Um, it is when they are both weakly equivalent to another data node of G. Uh, this is interesting because even though two data nodes may have completely different source and target clicks, they still may be weakly equivalent. For example, if we have uh, D1, D4, and D7, uh, we see that uh, D1 and D7 have completely different uh, source and target clicks, but they are still weakly equivalent. Uh, this, is, this is because uh, D1 and D4 have the same source click, and D4 and D7 have the same target click. So there, is, there exists a chain of an alternating sequence of source and target clicks between the two nodes, so they are weakly uh, equivalent. And we have the weak uh, RDF summary uh, based on the weak equivalence relation. Uh, what, what can happen in the weak summary is uh, that uh, many nodes can end up, from the input, can end up being represented by the same summary node. And, and here we see that uh, the top node, O28, uh, represents clearly very different things like performances, people, music, and so on. Uh, so uh, this is not very useful. Uh, up to now, uh, our click-based equivalence only relied on data properties. Now we wondered what about the typing, if we can use the typing information to somehow uh, get a better summary, a more, more accurate, accurate summary. Uh, this has led us to typed weak and typed strong RDF summaries, uh, where uh, we say that first we will summarize typed data nodes by their typing, and then we will summarize the rest, the untyped nodes, by these clicks based on data properties. So basically, we define type-based equivalence where we require that two data nodes have exact same typing, which uh, generates a type-based RDF summary. And then we get this typed weak, type strong summary. So basically, we take G, we summarize the types based on the type equivalence, and then we summarize the type-based summary based on the data properties, the clicks. And we get the typed weak or type strong summary. Uh, so if the weak summary looked like this for this given data set, this is its typed weak summary, uh, which is uh, clearly a better representation of the structure. 
So now we have these four uh, summaries, uh, weak, strong, typed weak, and typed strong. And now we wonder which one is the best and what are the properties, the qualities of these summaries. So first we look at compactness. Um, we uh, showed that uh, the summary cannot be larger than G. And um, our experiments uh, confirmed that actually these summaries are usually orders of magnitude smaller than the input. So uh, for the strong and weak summaries, uh, we, we generated um, some summaries uh, for the synthetic Berlin Sparkle benchmark data set. Uh, the horizontal axis is the number of uh, triples in the input in millions, and the vertical axis is the number of triples in the summary. And we see that for 50 million and 100 million triples in the input, uh, the strong and weak summaries have only around 1,000 triples. And uh, similarly, typed weak and typed strong are usually larger, but still it's orders of magnitude smaller than, than the input. And we see actually that for uh, this data set, uh, the summary doesn't actually change from 50 million to 100 million triples. Uh, then we look at query-based representativeness. Uh, as our query language, we take a relational basic graph pattern queries which are basically graph pattern queries of any shape with constants for classes and properties and variables in other cases. So uh, given an RDF graph G, uh, we want to represent RBGB queries from the input into the summary. And this means that if a query have, has answers on G, it should have some answers on its summary. And in fact, we achieve this by having a homomorphism from the input to the summary. So all of our uh, summaries are RBGP uh, representative. Uh, this means that if a query is, uh, has answers on G, any query, it will have answers on the summary. So a consequence of this is that if a query is empty on the summary, for sure it will be empty on the input and we never have to run it. And here we observe that we say some answers, so exact query answers are not preserved. And this is a trade-off uh, we make because we want to achieve uh, full representativeness, uh, we want to generate compact summaries, and we want to do this efficiently. So now we look at the other way around, uh, if, uh, strong query-based accuracy. Uh, if a query has answers on the summary, does it have any answers on the input? And uh, since we don't have a homomorphism from the summary to the G, uh, we cannot, uh, even, even our summaries have zero false negatives, but there may be some false positives. So there is some kind of uh, accuracy loss, and uh, if uh, a query is, um, has answers on the summary, it may or may not have answers on G, and we still have to run it. So now we wanted to compare the different summaries with respect to the accuracy loss to see which one is the best or worst. And uh, basically we measured the percentage of false positives, which means that we basically counted RBGP queries uh, of up to K triples, which uh, have answers on the summary but are empty on the input. So for this sample summary, uh, we may want to write this query, which asks for a, a single node, which has all three types, book, journal, and specification. And if we run it on the summary, we get the node N1 as the answer. However, if we look at the input, we see that this uh, query is clearly empty because there doesn't exist any resource which has all three types. So this is a false positive and we are counting these kind of queries. Um, the results here are shown for different kinds of uh, RDF data sets. Uh, we ran up to K3, so for up, we ran the queries of size 2 and uh, all queries of size 3. Uh, and basically, uh, we see that typed weak and typed strong summaries are uh, usually the best, the most accurate, with the least accuracy loss. And even though intuitively we would think that weak summary is always the worst, or worse than strong one, it, does, it doesn't have to be the case. For the DBpedia data set, uh, when k is 3, we see that the weak summary is better than uh, the strong one. So basically, uh, we cannot draw a general conclusion uh, which summary will be the best will depend on the concrete data set. Um, another interesting property is semantic completeness, uh, which says that uh, we want the summary to reflect all explicit and implicit triples uh, from G, the saturation or the semantics of G. And uh, the actual saturation operation uh, is an operation which computes all implicit triples and stores them explicitly. So one way to uh, have a semantically complete summary would be to take the input, to saturate it, and to then summarize the satur saturated graph. So this graph doesn't have any implicit triples because they have been made explicit by saturation. However, the problem with saturation is that this is an expensive operation time and space-wise, and it's not, it, 
very efficient for large graphs. So this is why uh, we uh, in, uh, wanted to um, investigate the possibility to compute a semantically complete summary of G without ever saturating G. So how we, want, how we do it is that we take G, we summarize it, and summarization is uh, a much more efficient operation, which generates more compact sum summaries, more compact graphs. And, th and then instead of saturating the large input, we saturate the smaller summary. And then we summarize the saturation of the summary. So basically this is one of the uh, distinguishing features of our work because uh, we're the first to study the semantic completeness of graph summaries and to create summaries which are actually semantically complete. And these are the weak and strong summaries. The typed weak and type strong summaries are not semantically complete because of the different treatment of types, typed in data nodes. So um, all of our summaries can be built in uh, linear time uh, in the size of G. The, uh, the algorithms are implemented in Java and Postgres and the uh, summaries are kept in memory. And in this picture that you can now see, um, uh, we show the summarization times, uh, which basically um, uh, shows that uh, strong and type strong summaries uh, usually take the longest time to compute because we have to pre-compute all the source and target clicks. Uh, however, the worst running time we've had was for the strong summary and for 100 million triples in the input, uh, which um, took si around 16 minutes, which is quite kind of good for a centralized uh, implementation. Um, many existing works uh, rely on by simulation as a node equivalence relation, uh, which says that nodes are equivalent if they have exactly the same incoming or outgoing edges. So for our example, where uh, based on clicks, R1, R1 and R2 and R3 are weakly equivalent because of this chain of data properties between R1, R2 and R3. Uh, according to by simulation, all of them are equivalent only to each other, only to themselves and not to each other. So in a way we summarize more and the click-based uh, summaries work more in favor of compactness. And in fact, the um, main problem of by simulation is that they grow exponentially with the input. So all uh, existing approaches based on by simulation have to limit themselves in some way. So uh, Consens uh, considers only path queries and uh, FAN, uh, which is a Sigmod paper, only uh, considers queries chosen by uh, the user. While here we uh, assume the user has zero knowledge of the graph and uh, we support uh, all our BGP queries from G uh, and we generate more compact uh, summaries. Uh, a classical notion, uh, another classical notion is the notion of data guides, uh, which uh, summarize paths in uh, object ex exchange model and XML documents, uh, which have inspired many other works in the field of summarization, but path-based approaches are n really not suitable for summarizing more complex uh, graph pat patterns. Uh, so as a part of the future work, uh, we would uh, like to see if we can extend uh, our summaries uh, to enable query answering just based on the summaries and never having to look at the uh, lar much larger input. For this, we would have to tr somehow keep track of false positives and eliminate all false positives from uh, the result set. And also there's a question of how to efficiently build the final uh, results. Uh, whether to do a cross product or to avoid cross product, which is not very uh, evident, so it's interesting. Uh, then we would look at incremental maintenance of summaries and uh, distributed algorithms to improve scalability. So to conclude, um, we have created RDF uh, graph summaries, uh, which are based on the classical notion of quotient graphs and our novel RDF node equivalence uh, relations. Uh, we generate su uh, compact summaries, which are uh, orders of magnitude smaller than uh, the input. Uh, they represent uh, all graph patterns from uh, G. And we offer two kinds of summaries, weak and strong one, which are semantically complete. They reflect all explicit and implicit triples. And uh, the, all of the summaries can be built efficiently uh, with uh, our linear time algorithms in the size of G. So that's it. Thank you for attention. <laughs> Questions? Yes. Hi, thanks for your talk. I have a question. Uh, on a couple of slides back, you said by simulation is exponential in the size of the graph. Yep. Um, can you explain that? Because, I mean, if by simulation is an equivalence relation on nodes, then in the worst case, you can have as many 
by similarity classes as you have nodes. So it's linear, not exponential in G. So can you please as explain you what you mean by exponential in G? Well, ba basically, um, you look at the in in incoming and outgoing edges. So you look at the na neighborhood of each node. So if you, um, I don't know exactly how by simulation works, but if you uh, expand the size of the neighborhood, so if you look at uh, immediate neighbor, immediate property, and then you look at the next property, and then you look at the next property, this grows exponentially. So I don't think it's about the number of nodes, but about the size of the neighborhood, which if you increase it, then... Uh, because if, if you look back in the literature, there's an in log n algorithm for computing by simulation reductions of graphs. So it's even better than quadratic. So you don't have to do this naive inspection, which is exponential. There are actually uh, algorithms which can do it in well, very, very low polynomial time. I'm yet to see a by simulation which uh, represents all queries from the input. Uh, you, you do have efficient algorithms which uh, support a really narrow class of queries. So either they support past queries efficiently or they uh, compress uh, graphs, but only with respect to user queries. So I, I'm still to see a, a by simulation based summary which represents all queries uh, from, from the input and which considers the semantics. So yeah, yeah, my question was just about what you meant by exponential, but thank you. Yeah. So I have a question about uh, uh, how do you assess the accuracy loss? For example, if I'm a, I am a user and I would like to use your, uh, the, the summary to answer a qu uh, query, uh, is there a means to tell me that uh, this query is not going to, to, to have uh, the right answers and you know, the others, I mean, and the opposite? I'm sorry, I didn't. So, so my question is about. Uh, I, as far as I understood, your uh, summary is not always going to give you the right answer to queries. For mm -hmm. example, here, it can even uh, invent some answer that is not, uh, does not uh, really exist. Yeah. So how do you characterize this query accuracy loss? I mean, or uh, have you studied this? And, uh, and more concretely, if you have a query, can you tell whether this query is going to provide, uh, or whether this data summary can answer this query or not? I mean. For the ac accuracy loss, we just measure it. So we, we don't have a way to overcome the accuracy loss. Mm -hmm. We count the, all these queries and we say, okay, this one is the best summary. It has the least accuracy loss. And uh, ba basically, since we don't preserve query answers, for the queries, um, uh, for the other way around, for the queries that we do represent, we can say if they are empty or not. We cannot say th these are the resulting tuples. So basically, for now, this is useful in da data visualization because, and maybe in some graph analytic scenarios where uh, we started, we wanted to generate some schemas which co were composed of queries which are non-empty non because you don't want to run analytics on, on empty queries. So here it's useful, the empty, non-empty uh, information, and this you can get. The other way around, if, uh, so uh, for example, by looking at the summary, I see that um, for, I don't ever have to write a query which uh, joins author and comment on the object. I know that it is empty, because if it's not in the summary, it's empty. The other way around, uh, we just measure the accuracy loss. Thank you. This answer. Last question. Uh, I have uh, two points around the same subject that concerns the use of the schema. Uh, in the beginning, you said, if I understood correctly, that uh, if a schema is available, you add these uh, uh, triples to the summary. So what happens if schema is available, but the actual knowledge base uh, uses uh, a small part of the schema? Actually, your summary would be a bit misleading uh, overall. No, it would not. But the, the, You the would not have any instances to represent... Uh, the whole schema, right? Yeah, but if this, if this is what RDF dataset looks like, then this is what it is. So we, we will summarize the data portion which exists, 
and we will copy the schema. And if some things were not uh, instantiated in the input, it will not be instantiated in the summary. So. Okay. Uh, on the same uh, issue, I didn't understand well what you do uh, with hierarchies in the summary. In case that you don't have schema, do you capture hierarchy information? Uh, you mean the semantic hierarchy? Yeah, I mean the subclass of, let's say, relationships, if they exist somehow. Uh, we don't infer this. So we, if you don't have any schema, we will just summarize the data, and we will not know if something is a subclass of something. So we don't inf generate new types or infer uh, typing. Thank you. Thank you. Let's thank you again, the speaker. Thank you.